So the next speaker is Mr. Frank Clegg, uh, and who will speak for 15 minutes, and there'll be a lot of five minutes. Right? Thank you. My name is Frank Clegg. I'm the uh, CEO of Canadians for Safe Technology, and I would like to thank the panel for accepting my request to speak and for the additional allotment. Um, we understand that your hands are tied to some degree by Health Canada as to what information you can, uh, you can and cannot make public. Our request is that you help us hold Health Canada accountable to a more open and transparent process of scientific research and evaluation in its current update of Safety Code 6. Since none of the mission uh, or process for the current update has been published, a lot of our comments today are based on our best guess and a lot of assumptions we've been ha had to make. I've spent my whole career in the technology industry. In my most recent role as a president of Microsoft Canada, I witnessed the incredible benefits that technology can provide. I also witnessed the potential harmful effects of technology that is not implemented safely. Now, as most of you are most likely aware, uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of technology that's, that depends on safety code six. So for example, most of our prov provincial governments are rolling out smart meters on residents and businesses. A lot of our provinces are rolling out Wi-Fi in schools. Telecom companies uh, are used, relying on safety code six in their placement of cell towers and antennas. The manufacturers of baby monitors, game consoles, cell phones, and tablets and other devices rely on CP code 6. We believe that we've, we've got this whole process backwards and it should actually be reversed. There are no studies that we've been able to find anywhere in the world that prove conclusively that the current limits of safety code 6 are safe for the 24 hour, seven day a week exposure that we're, we're getting today from cell towers, smart meters and ice, yet we continue to roll them out in our society. We believe that the responsibility should be placed on the manufacturers of these devices to prove that they are in fact safe. We're encouraged by industry, Canadian Industry Minister Moore's statement on October 20th of 2013 as reported in the North Shore News, and I quote, companies have to demonstrate that there is no public health concern. There are peer-reviewed studies that show harm to humans and levels of wireless radiation significantly below Health Canada's safety code set. Due to scheduling conflicts, unfortunately, a lot of them are not able to be here today. However, you have in your, in your material submissions from Drs. Deborah Davis, David Carpenter, Hugh Taylor, and A.B. Miller. Fortunately, Dr. Martin Blank was able to uh, change his schedule and come here in person. Recently, Swedish researchers published a study in the International Journal of Oncology. The study correlates wireless technology used to malignant brain tumors. You have a submission from one of the lead researchers, Dr. Hardell, in your package as well. There are many medical and associations who have spoken out against outdated safety limits that Safety Code 6 represents. Some of these include the American Association of Environmental Medicine, American Academy of Pediatrics, International Society of Doctors, and the Irish Doctors Environmental Association. Again, you have submissions from doctors, medical doctors Bray and Genius in your package. Similar to tobacco, asbestos, some prescription medications, and other harmful medicines, items, we risk acting too late to help keep Canadians safe. As you've already heard from a couple of speakers this morning, wireless radiation is harmful to humans in more ways than just cancer. Activity is a condition where symptoms such as increasing headaches, insomnia, pain, rashes, memory lapses, and dizziness occur when the person is in close physical proximity to a source of wireless radiation. For the same reason, we cannot yet explain why some individuals are fairly are fatally affected by hand, secondhand smoke and others are able to smoke two packages of cigarettes a day, we cannot explain why some, some individuals react to minimal exposure to wireless radiation. People affected by ES must take measures to distance themselves from any location where wireless radiation is present. It affects where they live, their ability to travel, work, and support their families. In fact, you, you have heard already this morning, and you're gonna hear from several of these individuals, 
mostly traveled on their own time and expense to tell their stories. Unfortunately, because we're not able to turn off the Wi-Fi in this room here at the university, some will be affected and may take a couple of days to actually recover. We will tell you the great lengths they have gone through to ensure these symptoms are real and are not some psychosomatic ailment. We're asking, we're here today, a lot of us, to ask the panel to push back on Health Canada to include electrosensitivity in its review of the current update of Safety Code 6. We don't believe any analysis of Safety Code 6 could possibly be complete without including electrosensitivity. We realize that Health Canada is your sponsor. However, there are many issues, in our opinion, that, that um, there are many issues that we have, the way that health approach it's taken in protecting Canadians from wireless radiation. We're asking you to ensure that Health Canada follows an open, standard, and transparent scientific protocols in its update to Safety Code 6. The following statement was removed from Health Canada's website. Health Canada encourages parents to reduce children's RF radio frequency radiation exposure from cell phones. Children are typically most sensitive to a variety of environmental agents. We would like to understand the science that drove that action. Health Canada has confirmed that there are no emails or written communications on why the sentence, and I quote, certain members of the general public may be more susceptible to harm from wireless microwave exposure was removed from the 2009 Safety Code 6 up. We've actually put in formal access to information requests to get that out. Safety Code 6 allows cell towers and wireless devices to emit radiation at levels that are 100 times more and is permitted in China, Russia, Switzerland, and Italy. Health Canada has not provided adequate explanation on why these differences. There's no visibility to the Royal Society's panel's mandate, your areas of focus, or your terms of reference. We also estimate, and I know there's constraints, that over a do there are dozens of Canadians who've asked to speak to the panel have not been. It appears that agencies and organizations across Canada have actually lost faith in Safety Code 6. On September 6, 2013, the Health and Public Advisory Committee of the Royal College of Physicians passed a motion to share the concerns about harm, wireless radiation, and electrosensitivity with the College of Physicians of Canada, Canadian Pediatric Society, Public Health Society of Canada, and the Canadian Task Force on Early Brain and Biological Development and early learning. In August of 2013, the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario, reportedly the largest teachers union in Canada, passed a resolution to study the effects of non-ionizing electromagnetic radiation, which is, which is the potentially harmful radiation emitted by cell phones. And they've asked for a report to be submitted back in to them back in by February 2014. City of Thorold passaging Health Canada to reevaluate the safety code, safety limits contained in safety, safety code six that relate to radio frequency exposure. Milton, Mississauga, Oakville, and all in Ontario have all passed motions requiring setbacks for cell towers located in residential areas, or have placed moratoriums on cell tower placements, or have done both. Probably aware of the European Parliament resolutions. 2008-2211 and 2007-2252 state, and I quote, the limits on exposure to electromagnetic fields which have been set for the general public are obsolete. Germany, France, Israel, Finland, US, and UK all have government agencies that have public notices and are restrictions on exposure to children well below C code 6 levels. Last week, Belgium announced that children's mobile phones may no longer be sold. Adds more credibility to our. So we have this few asks of the panel. Um, Health Canada has not provided uh, an unredacted copy of their contract that they have with you. We feel as Canadians, we have the right to understand what your mission is. We we, have, we think there's some fundamental flaws in the in the. Uh, following the scientific international standard research protocols. Uh, 
by not providing the purpose and objectives, the background, assumptions, and the scope and research questions that they're using. I'd like them to declare the criteria for the inclusion and exclusion of evidence or publishing the reports. I'd like to ensure the panel has the mandate, the capability, and the resources to validate and further update the literature search. Any of the information we've noted, I don't know how you can possibly do a full and extensive exhaustive review given the minimal resources that you can get. It's easy to go back and ask your employer for more money, but in this case, we'd actually encourage you to do so. Uh, we'd like to help us uh, encourage help a framework that is based on international standards to formalize the evidence method to answer research questions. Again, even that is kept in secrecy. We'd like to help Canada to outline its peer review process peer review. And finally, publish the review protocols and conduct a report work according to international standards. So beyond Safety Code 6 itself, we should provide recommendations and guidance to minimize exposure, particularly to the most vulnerable, such as children, the infirm, and the sensitive. Health Canada should adopt much more protective exposure levels comparable to global best practices, such as aforementioned countries, Switzerland, Italy, France, Canada, and Russia. We're asking Health Canada to acknowledge electrosensitivity exists and take responsibility as outlined in the report of the Standing Committee of Health August of 2010, specifically stated, sure that it has a process in place to receive and respond to reports of the adverse reactions to electromagnetic radiation emitted. Health Canada should start now to collect information prepare solutions for electrosensitive individuals and not abdicate this to another So in conclusion, many of us feel that this panel is our last line of defense against a flawed process that Health Canada has used to update safety concepts. We know it's your sponsor, but relying on your credibility and ethics, scientific research professionals that you are, to actually reject the internal review that Health Canada has just completed. We'd like you to help us hold them accountable to a truly open, transparent process of scientific research and evaluation. Um, just as a, a point of clarification, the peer review process is up to us, it's not up to Health Canada. Uh, Peer review, and I'll just briefly describe how it's done. We, we appoint a peer review monitor. That is a person outside of the committee, uh, usually a fellow of the Royal Society, somebody who we think knows the field at least in an overall sense. And that peer review monitor then selects peer reviewers, and I believe we've actually requested of you a name for a peer reviewer, uh, which we'd be glad to receive. Um, usually it's three or four peer reviewers. The draft report is sent to them. They're asked to uh, reflect on it and, re and report what, on their findings on the veracity of the report, its clarity, and so on, within three or four weeks. Following that, the peer review monitor relays the findings of the, uh, the peer reviewers to the chair of the committee who transmits it to them. They are asked to uh, look at the uh, of the peer review viewers to uh, reflect on them, to adopt them, or whatever they do. Then, as a result of that, that final report, as amended by the committee, is sent back to the peer review monitor, who looks at it to see if all of the recommendations have been adhered to by the committee. And if he or she is satisfied with that, that is the final report. It is then submitted to me. Health Canada has absolutely nothing to do with this. Any uh, comments on this? Okay. Zoom will get a, a written copy of your yes, testimony. I, I, I will make the deadline to get that into you. Thank you. I guess the thing that I would also be interested in is, but I'm not sure, it might even be on your website, is you mentioned some of the local uh, local rules that have been developed. Interesting to take a look at some of those, how they compare and how they would. They, they, they're on our website under session. All of those.
Thank you. Um, 